was the first black manager in the central office in Delaware. Right. There were other there were black female managers, but the first black male manager in the central office. They always had operators in the telephone company, but the first the but they and it, they, they but they didn't have any black operators in the telephone company. But so that was when the NACP came in. Since there were so many blacks who used the telephone service, that they should also be represented. And I told them in a polite manner that if we did not consider changes, then we had 3,000 people signed up to call and say they did not need telephone service anymore. And force them to hire black operators. And that's, that's, that was when, that's where Nancy Harris came in. Many years before I came with the telephone company, she broke the cycle for the women. And she, you know, in, in Delaware, they had black female managers elsewhere, but in Delaware, that was, they did not. She broke that first cycle. And I was, I had to do the same thing within the central office. I know it's hard to believe that in 1972, the telephone company was still going through that kind of thing, but it's, that's, that's the way it was. As time went on, AT&T, they broke up the telephone company into separate uh, companies. Uh, AT&T became a section of its own, and when that happened, then I got transferred to the uh, to the Washington area, and uh, I worked in Washington. I worked in Virginia, and uh, I worked and I had a CO in Washington D.C. and I had that for several years. And then uh, then there was uh, another another split of the company. My name is uh, Norwood Sloan, and most people refer to me as Woody. I'm uh, 78 years old, and uh, I've, I've managed to, uh, to retire from two careers. My first career was uh, with the United States Air Force from 1949 until 1969, and my second career was with uh, Diamond State Telephone Company. At that time, Diamond State Telephone Company consisted of uh, three telephone companies, uh, Bell Atlantic, uh, Diamond State, and uh, AT&T. I was part of the AT&T group. Uh, of, of how I, I came to work for the uh, telephone company was that, that in 1972, uh, the telephone company was under court order to hire more management people in Delaware. Uh, the problem was the even though they were under court order to hire more managers in, in the technical field, uh, their excuse was that they couldn't find anyone qualified. Now, to me, that didn't make sense because they had plenty of uh, of uh, Afro-American uh, technicians working in the telephone company and they, to me they could have uh, promoted them. But uh, since the telephone company in Wilmington was, was uh, totally controlled by families 
uh, that they were using that excuse to not promote anyone. I was approached to come to work for the telephone company uh, and, and when I was approached to come with the telephone company I had to think long and hard about it because it would have been a tremendous pay loss. However, uh, Mr. Houlihan, who was the uh, CEO of uh, Diamond State Telephone Company at the time, he sat down and we talked about it and uh, one of the things that we talked about was why he wanted me to come work for the telephone company and uh, but he also want some he wanted he wanted someone that was willing to make some sacrifices uh, in coming with the telephone company uh, for the reasons that he wanted me there the reason he wanted me there he wanted to break the cycle he wanted he, he himself was under a lot of pressure to uh, hire uh, black managers into the communications field in Delaware. We had black managers working in Philadelphia under the Bell Telephone System in Philadelphia, but it, we, they were lacking in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Delaware area. So one of the things that uh, we talked about was uh, me coming to work for them, and the reason he wanted me is because I had just retired from the military and he felt that I could handle the pressure that was was going to come with the job and he wanted and the, one of the things I had the qualifications as far as communications was concerned because my entire 20 years that I worked in the Air Force I worked as a communication technician so there was no doubt that I was qualified in communications but I just was not qualified in communications in regards to the way the telephone company did communications. The thing that, that, that made me like that was made me very doubtful about starting this job was I would had I would at the time I was working for Spitz Laboratories. At the time I they had hired me and to to travel around the country installing planetariums because at that time we were well into the space age. And I was I was uh, going into different colleges and high schools and hiring a crew when I got there and installing 40 foot, 60 foot planetariums. I would have to take a tremendous pay cut to come to work for the telephone company. So it, I, 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 I had to really think harder about that. Started attending college at Goldie Beacon College and uh, in, 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 uh, in the uh, management field. Mr. Houlihan promised me that the day that I graduated, that would be the day that, the day I graduated, that they would place me in management within the telephone company. And they were true to their word on that. The day I graduated, he placed me into management even though they didn't have a job for me in management. So to do that, he placed me in, in, into the telephone company and he placed me in a training management category where I was traveling around doing all of the management jobs within a telephone company. First I went to pole climbing school, then I, for a while there I, I was working in engineering, and uh, then I was working in the central office for a while, uh, and I was, you know, I was just doing everything that they had to do. And eventually, true to his word, the first opening came up in the central office, which was definitely my field. Uh, I was hired. I, I, he brought me in and made me a manager within the central office. The uh, Afro-Americans that were working as technicians or as draftsmen or whatever they were working in, other than management, they all were pulling for me, especially the women. And one of the things I remember very well is there one there was one there was one uh, a person that worked in engineering. Her name was Sharon Hill. Sharon, when I I knew nothing about engineering, and I was I was a very poor drafts person, but any work I turned in to her, she told me, "Don't worry about it." He says, because we are not going to let our black man fail. 
And so any work that I turned in, she made sure that when I turned it in, that she went over it with me and we made sure that it was correct and it went out correctly. So I, was, I feel very grateful for that. Nancy Harris happened to be the first, uh, the first black female hired within the telephone family. And also found out at a later, later, later date how she, who was responsible for that. And I understand that there was a, a Minister Moyer. Between uh, Sharon, uh, Nancy, and uh, several other uh, uh, black women, uh, they helped me get through the everyday struggle that I had managing within the telephone company. Now eventually, uh, my philosophy was that even though I was catching all kind of, all, all kind of uh, hell from the non-Afro-Americans and some, Afro, and some Afro-Americans within the company, because there were Afro-Americans in the company that felt that they should have been promoted uh, however, the only reason that I felt that they should have been promoted to ought to, but the only reason that they weren't promoted is because they were using that excuse that they weren't qualified uh, with the education of, of, a, of a degree. So I had both the experience and then actually, eventually when I graduated I had a degree also. I found that when I, I had to draw on my military career to survive. And one of the things that when I went to work for them, when I was catching all of this, this hell from all angles, I made it quite clear to everyone that worked for me that you may not like me, and I don't care if you like me, but you damn sure are going to respect me. And so that was my policy. I just, I just, I based everything on that. Don't like me if you if you don't you don't want to, but you're gonna respect me. How long were you with the company? I was with the company 20 years. I retired from, from the telephone company after 20 years. After after a few months, after they saw that hey, they weren't gonna run me off. They, they, I wasn't gonna give up, no matter what they did, even though they did things that were pretty dangerous. For instance, uh, I had a, a ground crew out there one time and uh, I was, uh, a, a car pulled up to me and, and pulled up to me and says, uh, say, you got a crew working down the road there and uh, the sign says, uh, cars pull over to the left. But the and, and but the crew was working on the left and I could have been very dangerous. The sign should have been crew working on the right and the traffic should have been pulling over to the left but they were but you know pulling over to the left and leaving the right clear but but they were the signs were telling them to do just the opposite. Now I thank the man we went down and I got the sign straight but these these guys that were working out there they were guys that had been on, been working, doing this work 15, 13, 20 years. So they knew what they were doing. So they were purposely setting me up to fail. Uh, however, and those are the kind of things that I, I had to endure during that period of time. So every time they, I ran up against something like that, I made sure that I let them know. I knew what they were doing. I wrote them up and documented it and went, did the paperwork right and eventually they got the message that we're not, he's not going anywhere. And then slowly but surely, uh, they, they start giving me the respect of a manager. And that's all I wanted. I just wanted the respect as a manager. And then slowly but surely, I began to get that respect. And uh, within a short period, uh, you know, within an 18-month period, you know, uh, 
they would start looking at me as a manager, someone that, you know, as a manager, and and they start, we start getting along, and that was that was the great thing about that. And then, and what really made me feel good because since I was able to break that cycle, shortly after that, that we met. Uh, the telephone company began to hire and promote within other black managers. I moved over into marketing and then I got transferred to Baltimore and that was my last assignment. And that's where I was when I finally retired. I was in, in Baltimore. They were offering packages to leave. And one of the packages they offered, the first, I was offered one of the first packages and that package can contain full health benefits and uh, and a retirement pay. So to me, uh, I thought about that. I had, you know, I was, you know, I was young enough then. I I got out of the Air Force at 37 and I went to work for a telephone company and I worked another 20 years. So uh, I was, I think I was uh, 37, 47, 50, I think it was about 50. 59 years old, so I figured, well, I could even work another career. Sometimes things happen for the good, and you don't even realize it, because immediately after I retired from the telephone company, I came down with prostate cancer. Mm -hmm.